Psychic Medium Queen coming in with another reading. But before we get into that, guys, I want to welcome all my new subscribers. Welcome to the Enlightened Family. If you happen to come across this channel, it wasn't by chance. Feel free to join us for more readings like this and readings to aid you on your own personal spiritual path. Don't forget to like the video, comment, and subscribe. Before we get into the video, guys, if you would like to help support the channel so that I can push out more videos for the collective, you would like to see more of me and get exclusive discounts as well as mini readings throughout the month, feel free to head over and select the Ultimate Plus tier for exclusive access to readings as well as first dibs on my merch. All right, let's get into the reading. Okay, guys, so I'm coming in as promised to do the reading as requested. She asked me to do this a few weeks ago. It hasn't been the six weeks that I normally suggest for people who have crossed over because they have to go through the process of accepting, but she is in a better state than what she was just a few weeks ago. In addition to that, I felt led to also include in this reading um, Amir Locke. Both energies are here. Now Amir, he, for those of you guys who are not familiar with his story, he was gunned down in cold blood by officers on a no-knock warrant. He was a very young man and he was actually staying at the home of, an, of a family member, I want to say. This is stuff that I actually read, but what I'm gonna get, what he's gonna give me is what he's gonna give me, we'll see here in just a moment. But that moved me to read for that young man. I just felt drawn. I normally petition for anybody. Uh, people normally just come to me, but for him in particular, I felt drawn to do a reading for him. And I'll let you guys know what I got in meditation for the pair of them before we proceed with the reading. She felt out of control. She felt taunted daily and haunted by demons. She's showing me either she was a cutter or she thought about cutting herself. Now days leading up to her death, she thought about ways to take her life. And these images were graphic. She thought about taking her life by a handheld loaded gun. I could see her uh, cutting as well. All she knew is she wanted it to be quick and painless. She was going through a severe dark night of the soul. You guys who have been on my channel for a while, you know that I say the dark night is a depression, but it's a depression with purpose because its sole purpose is to bring you to the other side. But when you are extremely gifted coming into that dark night, those lower vibrational energies are going to do everything that they can in their power to make you check out of here. You guys that are not aware, I'll put a link below and give you some information on it. But a dark night of the soul is nothing to play with because people have literally wanted to take their lives. They have taken their lives. Some people just cannot get through to the other side for that rebirth because it's transformation. Now, as for Amir, I'm hearing him shouting, no. I'm hearing him say, I'm too young. It's not my time. He's having a hard time with this present time. He's not accepting it, but... I am glad to say he will get justice. I'm hearing him saying, it wasn't my fault. It wasn't me. Why me? Why, man? This young man is so hurt. Okay, so I'm going to get into the cards and they're both going to tell you what it is they want the collective to know. Any messages they want to put out there for anybody who may come across this video and happen to watch that maybe a family member for their closure and um, for their understanding of what was going on with them deeper than what was released by uh, your local media outlets. Because the thing about media is, is they can twist stories, twist narratives, say things to cover things up or try to give reason to something that they don't understand. You know, it's television, tell you a vision. Okay, so let's get into it here. Let's okay, Amir, what would you like to say to us about your situation and tell us what's coming up and what you would like the collective to know about your situation, please. Thank you. A lot of greed going on here, a lot of control and manipulation by the police department. Wanted to control the narrative of when that was going to come out, how it was going to come out, and what was lied about. That's what's going to tear this down. He's feeling like his life was taken over control. He's saying that I didn't get a chance to live my life. I didn't get a chance to make better decisions. And... I'm hurting and it's like he's trapped in limbo. He's in desolation right now currently. He's holding on to the fact that he didn't get a chance to do his work. And as a result of that, this young man will be back around before I even touched the card. I knew that that was going to be one of the messages. He will be back around. This was too soon. 
And I'm hearing, of course, too quick. He didn't have a chance. Queen of Cups. Now, he was trying to improve his life. He was trying to make some changes. I'm hearing him say, I wasn't even supposed to be there. And he was his parents' pride and joy. That was their baby. And they were so hurt by this. Even when he was first born, it's like he was, he must have been some kind of miracle baby in the way I almost felt like he wasn't expected, if that makes any sense. He's showing me that he knows he's gonna to have to give up. He knows that he's out of his body and that there's no turning back at this juncture for him to come back. And he's disappointed. He's disappointed at the way that his life has been taken. He's disappointed at the fact that all the strides that we made, that people's lives are still being taken based off the color of their skin. And granted, people might try to argue with about the fact that he had a weapon right beside him. He wasn't shooting at anybody. And before lethal force is being taken, there's supposed to be precautionary measures put in place that you're supposed to take before you do this. But because he was, of course, a man of color, a young man of color, his life was taken. Unfortunately, this is still a very real thing that is still being fought. Racism is, is never stopped. It's like Bill Smith said, it's being recorded here. And he's saying here, I still had a ways to go. I still had mountains to climb. I still had things I wanted to do, people I wanted to see. He's showing me there were times where he was in a group of people, but he felt like he was totally alone. So that means that he might've had a, a personality that he may have, could have been the life of the party at the same time. He felt alone. And this is just confirmation of what I gave earlier. He will be coming back around for sure here. He's still holding on. He's still trying to stay around as much as he can in spirit, but he's going to have to accept here. He's detached from his actual physical earthly body. And this is what he's having a hard time with at present time. He was like, but I, I may have had things to improve on, but I, I did a lot of good things. I poured into people's lives. You know, I washed out for people. I had pe people's back. And I believe that's why he had that gun for protection. It, you know, it may have looked like it was a bad thing to some people, but his thing was protection. There will be judgment. It's confirmation. The police officers that did this to him, there will be repercussions. Now, granted, there will be a desire to keep things under wraps because it can't be another thing like George Floyd. I read for him and you all know what Spirit gave about that, that there would be justice and there in fact was 10 months later, but justice nonetheless. It's the same thing with this young man. It's a corrupt system. It's not objective. It's not set for the black man. And it's sad because no matter what color you are, you have the same kind of blood running through your veins. It's the same color. It's amazing how belief systems can corrupt somebody's mind and continue for generations. It's really sad. Once these people get their due for what they did to him, his parents and the people that love him will be at peace with that, knowing that justice was served. He's saying here, I was sadly attached to a family that had a lot going on within it. I knew how my family was and I had their back. I was tied to them. We was 10 toes down. So whatever it was, is whatever it was, whatever they say is what it went. So it's like he was taught at an early age to protect himself, to look out, to watch out. And he was very mindful of people too. So them doing the no-knock warrant is them like literally breaking in because I can't see him opening the door. I can see him watching out, but I can't see him open the door for anybody. He's saying here that I felt desolate. And they did get him to the hospital, but his spirit was already being yanked from him in time enough for him not to feel so much pain. Like spirit was already on its way down as soon as it happened. And I'm almost feeling like the desire was to save him and they, and they almost could have had he put a little bit more will into it. And he's saying, yes, that's exactly it. But it was meant for him to go. He didn't feel like it was his time because he thought he was too young. There's always a reasoning for why things are allowed to happen like this. Unfortunately, and I've said this before, and I wasn't doing a mediumship, but sometimes when people's lives are taken it's almost like a lamb to the slaughter and so much change happens as a result. And it's sad that it takes bloodshed for that to happen. And that goes back to the dawn of time 
sacrifice having to be made for change to come. The thing with this is, is that the hate has to stop. And he's like, I'm, I was young, man. I was too young, man. And these are his tears, you guys. You guys who have been following me, you know that whatever I read with mediumship, I feel what the person felt. Now, granted, he was shot so I can see him. I can see the bullet holes. Um, I can see the blood. Here. Okay, sweetheart. Is there anything else that you want to say here? He's like, no, man, I'm just angry. I'm just angry. Angry that I left my family. He said, I'm hurting. I'm hurting, man. <sighs> so, you will get justice, Amir. And he's saying thank you for that. And thank you for wanting to read me. I might check in with him a little bit later, maybe down the line, once he's crossed over and is a little bit more at peace. And he's like, I ain't gonna never be at peace. So he's really pissed off about this whole situation. He's really, really hurt about that. He doesn't understand why. But I'm I'm just happy to let you know that you will get the justice you need. It doesn't it doesn't give you your life back, darling. But you get the justice. Okay. All right, you guys. I'm gonna move on over. I have her sitting down. Amir, before we move on, do you have anything that you would like to say that the collective? Is there anything that you want to give as an encouragement to your fellow young people that may come across this channel? Or anybody of any age for that matter. He's saying look out for yourself. He has some choice words. I'm not going to repeat those. He feels a way about the police. So he's saying you know what the police. He's saying real talk. I'm going to miss my family. I love y'all. Keep fighting for power. It's like power is so big here. I might even usually after that you would hear equality. But he's like keep fighting for power. Because it's like... We have none, unfortunately, is how he feels. And he's saying, free my cousin, like he feels like he shouldn't have to pay for whatever it is they're charging him for. I'm seeing his family down. He's showing me how they look. He sees them. He sees them mourning. He sees them suffering. He sees them wanting them. And he's going to actually be visiting uh, his mother, I see here, especially when he's in a better space. He's going to be watching over her. Okay, because she's really having a hard time present time, and her family's gathering around her at this time. He's showing me. Yeah, I'm seeing cars pull up too, so the funeral and everything. I'm seeing a lot of. I'm seeing a white limo here. I'm seeing them like having like themed shirts, possibly or or something on suits, something to represent him, like you know, and give him a send off here. Okay. It's interesting. That's why spirit pretty much intertwined these two and had me be drawn to a mirror is because they have some similarities here. I'm seeing that they're both going to be back around here with the world card for sure. She may have been beautiful to everybody else, but this is a young woman that did not see beauty. You know, she was one of those type of people that she was beautiful on the inside and outside and she didn't let the beauty define her. It was but a part of her. And then I'm seeing some of the same cards here with the money thing. You know what I mean? She had a lot of money. Hers is different. They're, they come from different sides of the coin. She's like, I had money, but I wasn't happy. It's like I gave to you guys in the last reading. You know, money does not equate to happiness. Ha happiness is created within the person. And she was hurt. The way in which she left prematurely because of her dark night, his life was taken from him. And so that's why they both will be back. She was a very beautiful young woman, very playful, very protective of her family. Nobody really knew all of the pain that she was in, but she was very protective of herself. Nobody genuinely, truly knew her. She knew everybody else, but they didn't really know her. Not for real, for real. Like her mother did, okay? She worried about money to an extent. She was always worried about how to make more of it, how to do something, how to expose herself to this or that. But she also was in this place of desolation really deeply here she felt like she was lost in time almost 
literally as beautiful as she was, she felt like this. She felt very much queen of swords. She was over life. She had had it at that tender age. She felt like her life was never going to improve. It was so gloomy. She didn't understand. She may have had somebody around her that was religious, but I don't believe she had anybody that was around her that was spiritual that could explain to her what was going on within her. Because I specialize in helping people with gifts, awaken to their gifts and learn about them and how to navigate in the dark night of the soul. Because the dark night of the soul is very heavy, you guys. The dark night of the soul literally can put you through so too much to the point where you literally feel like you're going crazy and you feel like you want to check out. And there are people who do, especially people who have to go through it alone and are not dealing with somebody who can explain it to them or they're even aware of it. And they can help them and navigate it. Because I know that when I went through it personally, I went through it alone. Totally alone. Okay. And I never want somebody to go through that. So if you're experiencing depression and you know it's deeper than you can't even explain why you're even there, why you're feeling with it, you're feeling. It can be triggered by something now, you guys. It can be triggered by heartache, a loss, and things like that. But um, most times, often than not, it just accompanies that. You already had stuff in you, and it all just comes to a head. That's what happened with this young woman. Okay. What else are you wanting to say here? She wants to give a message to the collective. And it piggybacks on what I gave you guys in the last reading, which is it doesn't matter how beautiful you are. It doesn't matter how much money you have. You can still be unhappy. I was protective of the lifestyle that I led, but nobody knew what was going on inside me. Nobody knew the pain that I was in. And I didn't feel strong enough to ask somebody else for help because I was so busy helping everybody else. And that's really sad. Please don't ever think that you have to be so strong that you can't ask somebody else for help because you can. Vulnerability is strength, not weakness. Okay? You want to give anything more? You want to tell more about... She doesn't want to get into... She's still very private, so she doesn't want to get into her personal life as far as uh, her mother goes. But I do know she mentioned, and she's saying, yes, I can do it. She mentioned a male in the last reading here. She's actually feeling a lot better now. I'm so happy to see that since I last read for her. That's the reading that didn't get posted, unfortunately, because something happened with the recording. But um, she's saying that she's better. She's in a better space. She's pouring out all of these woes and all of this affliction that she had. She's letting it go. She's moving on. And this is why she's now happy. She's in a much better space in these uh, past few weeks. Here's that masculine, yeah. She's getting away from the anger and the hurt. And I'm even hearing complacency that she felt like she had. She's like, I'm just letting it go. What's done is done. You know, I'm no longer there. I no longer have to suffer. And that was the whole point. She didn't want to suffer anymore. Spirit did give this, and I'm glad that it came up again because I want her to cover as much as she needs. But Spirit did give that there was a masculine here that she was connected to. And he wanted a deeper connection. Now, it's not in the cards, but I know that she had mentioned something about a third party connection, her heart being broken, okay? She's saying here, I was creating a lot of towers in my life. I was making a lot of things, you know, bigger than they were because I was in so much pain. She didn't know to ask spirit. She didn't know to ask for help. She may have knew how to pray, but there's a difference between praying and telling God what it is you need and then manifesting you know, saying things with expectation and pulling things in. Two totally different things here. This is why this angel is standing here because she didn't talk to him. She just created her own destiny. She decided ultimately to walk away from everything that was hurting her. Everything that she created, she left behind. And she left it to her mother. Everything she owned. Hmm. This young lady will be forever remembered. She's loved by those who knew her. And this usually would give me her, but she's saying this is how her mother feels right now because your child leaving this earth before you is painful. You want to see yourself go before you see your child go. So she's really feeling the desolation, her mother at present time. But it's okay. Like Amir, she's going to be visiting her mother as well. Yeah, she was always unhappy. It's, it doesn't matter how much money she had. 
it doesn't matter how many parties she attended, how many appearances she did, what shows she appeared on. She, it just, nothing would make her happy because she didn't understand what was going on inside her. She was in so much pain. This kind of even looks like her because she had the curly hair. And she's like, that is me. That's how my face looked. She's saying that's how I looked. I just felt so desolate. It felt like every single dime that I made, it just didn't mean anything to me. Little did she know she it was her purpose. Her purpose was on its way. Do you have anything else she would like to add? She's saying no, not really. Okay, you guys, so present time, that's all they're both giving me because they both still have some transitioning to do, okay? And if you have somebody who has crossed over to the other side that you would like to connect with, feel free to contact me for a personal paid reading at psychicmediumqueen.net. I do hope to be of service to you all. I do hope you are having a beautiful day, week, or weekend whenever you are viewing this. Please leave your comments in the comment section below about how you feel about both of these young people. And I will talk to you all in the next reading. Blessings.